Hi, this is Jeff with FrostyGarden.com, and today we're going to be talking about cold stratification. Cold stratification is a special treatment that is applied to seeds that aids in increasing germination rates. We're going to talk about how we do it, why we do it, and what it does. To be clear, cold stratification is a semi-advanced gardening technique, and what we mean by that is that it's not a practice that the beginner gardener would typically run into. It's not technically difficult, but what we would say is that we have not grown every seed on earth, and so there could be oversights in this video. So you may need to adapt this information to your specific plants and circumstance. We also have an accompanying deep dive article that you'll find linked down in the video description. This goes into the specific schedules that we use and sometimes written form is a better way to consume that kind of information. So let's get on to cold stratification. When cold stratification is required, it's usually related to a dormancy process that the seed has developed through evolution, and it's designed to delay germination. And basically the reason the seed does this is to prevent germination, say right before winter, when it wouldn't be able to establish itself and survive before the winter sets in. Cold stratification is one of several potential seed treatments that can be applied, and usually it's aimed at simulating a winter for those seeds. And typically what this does is it breaks that dormancy process that we mentioned earlier and allows the seed to actually germinate. Cold stratification requirements are most often encountered with perennial flowers, and sometimes you can also see it with annual flowers as well. And usually these are going to be native northern varieties where you run into this process and they normally would experience a winter in the wild, and thus they've developed these dormancy mechanisms that we've talked about. You really don't see cold stratification requirements relating to vegetables that you might grow, and so you're only going to encounter it when you grow more obscure types of northern flowers. There are a few other seed treatment processes out there, such as scarification, which is the practice of scoring seeds. You might also see requirements to soak seeds, which simulates uh, very heavy rainfalls. And then in warmer climates, you might see the need to actually bake your seeds, which will simulate those seeds sitting under intense sun for very long periods of time. The process of cold stratification is primarily aimed at increasing germination rates, and what happens when you expose your seeds to cold temperatures is it kicks off a biological process that breaks down those natural dormancy processes that the seed has, and this basically allows the seed to germinate more effectively. In many cases, you perform the cold stratification process because your seed packet provides instructions to do so, and every seed packet will have an instruction booklet that tells you how to grow that particular seed. But this isn't always the case, and so we will cover some of those use cases where you might want to practice cold stratification. For further clarity, you can just not practice cold stratification, and some of your seeds will likely germinate. Again, this process is primarily aimed at increasing germination rates, and sometimes it can be a night and day difference. We've most often encountered the need for cold stratification with flowers, and more specifically native northern flowers. However, there is some science that backs up that cold stratification can generally benefit a lot of different kinds of seeds as well. Most people end up storing their seeds at room temperatures, and this is because refrigeration space is often valuable and designed for food. But if you do end up storing your seeds in refrigerators, you often don't need to practice cold stratification as they've already experienced those cold temperatures. It's probably important for us to distinguish between cold stratification and cool germination. And when we speak of cold stratification, we're usually talking about germinating those seeds at more typical room temperatures. Most seeds will germinate best at room temperatures and might experience problems with germinating at cooler temperatures. However, there are some seeds that do require cool germination. We have encountered a couple of flowers out there that do require cool germination. For example, columbine and larkspur. Both of these are fairly late season sows, and so what we do is we'll plant them outside about a month to our last frost, and this provides both cold stratification and that cool germination process. Otherwise, generally speaking, you want to germinate your seeds with a normal or standard germination process, and if you don't know what that means, we have a video for you on that topic. 
So now let's talk about the mechanics of cold stratification. For the most part, most gardeners are simply going to place their seeds in the refrigerator. Some gardeners do prefer to use the freezer for this process, and that's certainly going to simulate a deep winter experience. There's also generally not good universal agreement on which of these two practices is best. And what we generally recommend is to start with refrigeration, and if you still experience super low germination rates, you might need to increase the actual refrigeration time or escalate to, say, a freezer situation. So you may see differences out there in what is specifically recommended, but generally that's our opinion on it, is that either or is okay. Fortunately, the actual mechanics of cold stratification are quite easy. Most gardeners are simply going to take their seed packet and toss it into the fridge. We usually recommend encasing the seed packet in a Ziploc bag, and this eliminates any additional moisture that could potentially impact those seeds. Other gardeners might portion out a particular amount of seeds into, say, a condiment cup or other container, and then put this into the refrigerator. If you do this kind of portioning, we strongly recommend labeling those seeds, as many seeds do look alike, and it can be easy to confuse them. Some gardeners do perform the practice where they place their seeds on a damp paper towel, fold that over, put the paper towel into a Ziploc bag, and then put that whole contraption into the refrigerator. And what this does is it exposes those seeds to moisture, which can improve germination rates, or really the speed of germination rates. In general, as we mentioned though, most seeds are going to germinate at warmer temperatures, and so you're not going to see actual germination until you bring those seeds out and expose them to, say, an indoor grow room. What really makes the cold stratification process more challenging is that you have two different schedules that you have to keep track of. Different seeds have different cold stratification times that are generally best. And so you have the schedule of when the seeds need to be sowed into the soil. Typically, this is going to be based on the region that you're growing in. And then you also have the schedule of when you'll start the cold stratification process of your seeds. When we talk about weeks here, what we're talking about are the number of weeks prior to your average last frost dates. And this is a really good way of thinking about both sowing schedules as well as cold stratification schedules. And so what you're going to do is you're going to count back the number of weeks from your expected last frost date, and that's when you're going to start your sowing and or cold stratification process. The generally accepted reason that different seeds require different amounts of time for cold stratification is based on the severity of winter that those particular seeds might be expecting. Some might expect a more severe winter and some might expect a more mild winter. And basically the length of time you do cold stratification is more or less simulating the length of that winter. So you might wonder how you will know if this process has been effective. And really, again, what this process is designed to do is increase your germination rates. So the only way to truly know would be to do a side-by-side -side comparison of cold stratification and not practicing cold stratification. But generally speaking, we would tell you that for the recommended flowers that we do this process on, we will see a good difference in the germination rates. It's probably important to clarify that you're not necessarily going to see 100% germination rates. You might see the needle move from like maybe 10% germination to maybe 50% or 60-70%, something like that. This isn't necessarily a guarantee that those seeds are going to germinate. It's just going to increase the percentages at which those seeds will actually germinate and become potential seedlings. I'm sure that there's more that we could say about cold stratification, but we're going to leave it here. As always, if you liked our content, we'd love it if you gave us a like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and put those down below. Once again, I want to thank you for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.